when you're focused on playing hockey and you're focused on creating a career for yourself and wanting to be the best, the focus is strictly hockey, training and, and eating and, and you know just honing your craft. It's not until it's brought to your attention by the media when you reflect on being a South Asian hockey player as opposed to just being a hockey player. And especially being in Vancouver where there was such a large South Asian community hearing about how people are watching hockey now because they see the name El Hotra. They take a sense of pride in knowing that there's a South Asian in, in hockey now. And then all of a sudden the light bulb goes on, well, maybe I can play too. So you hear stories of people playing the game because they see a South Asian name on an NHL jersey. And that brings that sense of pride. Full name, Emmanuel Naveen Malhotra. I'm the youngest of four. Every sibling has uh, an English and an Indian name. And then growing up, when I started playing hockey around eight years old, it was at the same time that Manny Lee of the Blue Jays was quite popular here in Toronto. Number two, the shortstop, Manuel Lee. My coach started saying, Emmanuel's too long on the ice. It's too long a name. So we're going to start calling him Manny, like Manny Lee. So I was like, all right, whatever. And then from there on, it was just Manny. It stuck from my hockey career on, and that's why I go by to today. Long years ago, we made a tryst with destiny. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. My father grew up in India in, in a time of partition. He was born in 1940, so um, obviously 1947, during the war, he was forced to move. They moved to a few different cities. It kind of acclimated me and he's very much wrapped his head around this lifestyle that I've had in terms of moving around and moving for work and playing on different teams. So I, I think that's something that I get from my father, his ability to just kind of up and leave and create a new environment, a new life for himself in different areas. Brandon Reed and Manny Malhotra have been honored as Canada's top three players in the tournament. Bob, we talked about it before. Uh, the effort that Manny Malhotra put in and, and Tyler Bulk alongside him was, uh, there was nothing left uh, when this tournament was over for those guys. Uh, Manny Malhotra especially. As I was growing up, you know, you, you heard racial slurs, you heard taunts, you heard stick to soccer, you know, just, just things that would, that would get under your skin. But I realized that, you know, it didn't matter. It didn't matter what people were saying. And sports has always been who can do it better. Doesn't matter if you're, you're white, black, brown. Doesn't matter if you're straight, gay, blonde, brunette. It's who's better at playing this sport. The other way, now Hunter, looking for the breakaway, and the win scores! One of the best stories of the National Hockey League just got better. Benny Malhotra, yet another comeback. Being a child of an immigrant, you learn certain traits and, and uh, the biggest one for me was, was work ethic. You got to put in the work. Finally making it to the league was uh, a dream come true, but I also had the understanding and realized that a lot of people make it to the NHL. Not a lot of people make it in the NHL in terms of having a career. So once I got there, obviously ecstatic that I had the opportunity and was drafted to play. But now, once again, that work mentality kicked in and realized now you're playing against men. You're playing against the best of the best. An overall effort has to be made on my part to work on everything in my game, uh, face-offs, uh, speed, thinking, passing. I think it, uh, it just got to get better from now. It took me a few years to figure that out, coming in as such a young player. Uh, it, it takes some time to figure out who you're going to be and what you're going to be in this league and what's going to allow you to have a prolonged career. Just having that strong influence from my family in terms of just get it done, just get the work in and, and, and find a solution was how I, I was able to make a career of it for myself. He's got a master plan for how he's going to work on getting better. It's great. You're going to say a master's degree, and he <laughs> might have in hockey, how to be that smart at 18. There are so many other aspects to being on a team and being on a good team that, you know, certain roles that need to be filled. As you get older, you realize the importance of every puzzle piece, you know, on a team. And if you can win a face-off, you get possession of the puck and also realize that, you know, from the defensive aspect of it, if you want to be out in key situations, you want to be out at the end of a game, if you're able to take face-offs well and if you're able to play defense, those attributes are valued at certain points in the game, at key moments in the game. So when I learned that, that's when I, I really started to hone in on wanting to be better at face-offs, wanting to be better at penalty killing, wanting to be better in the defensive zone. So that's part of the message that I try to teach the guys is that you know those are 
critical times in the game. Those are very important moments. Seeing different representations, seeing people of color in different situations and scenarios and, and at different levels of the game in different roles. It's a great sense of pride knowing that families and, and kids that perhaps would not have joined hockey had they not seen representation at the highest level are, are now playing and now thriving and succeeding.